Uh, so I'm delighted to be here. Uh, it kind of feels like slipping on my old boots, um, it, but in a different kind of way. So now I'm with teachingbooks.net, but uh, those of you who know me know that I've been in education for almost 30 years, and then I went into the marketing world with Junior Library Guild, and um, just in May, uh, joined the teaching books team um, from Ohio, where they said, go back to California and teach them. And I said, OK. So, so that's why I'm, I'm home, but I'm not. Um, so um, I'm so happy in so many ways that you already have access to teachingbooks.net. And, um, and there's so many places in this state that didn't have anything. And now they have, thanks to the State Library and the support of Riverside County Office and the um, state funding, they have access to three reputable um, databases that they can use with their, um, with their kids, that their teachers and their kids can use. So I'm delighted today to, to give you um, a little bit of, of, of an overview and work session. Um, so instead of, usually I talk as fast as humanly possible and give you all this stuff to do, but today we're going to um, give you time to actually leave with stuff done. Um, and we're supposed to go till three, but uh, we'll see what happens, right? Um, and I will give you a break because I have learned, because I've been working um, from home in my home office, that you can only look at the computer screen before too much. And um, it causes you sometimes to not be a nice person if you look long enough or to make mistakes. So um, halfway through, we'll stop, take a little stretch break, um, get something to drink, run to the restroom or whatever you need to do. So we'll do that about halfway through. And those of you listening at home, you can uh, do the same kind of thing. So um, as you came in, um, I put a handout. Um, so raise your hand if you don't have one. And of course, if you don't have one, um, you, you might not have one if you're listening outside of this room. And I know that the San Diego County office will send you that. So not to despair. Um, what they're mostly getting is homework. So, um, so you might use the other side to take notes about what we're going to do today. But we're going to actually start at, hello, darling. That's all right. Come on in. Um, so we're going to actually start um, at, at um, the main website. And what I'm going to do today is first I'm going to show you why you want to listen. Right? It's one thing to, to get a free gift, but then it's another thing to know what's behind that door. You know? So we're gonna, I'm going to show you some things first so that you know why you should listen. And then we're going to um, log in. So that might take us some time to make sure everybody gets logged in. Um, I'm going to show you some things. We'll do a little show and do. So I'll show you how to do things. And then at that point, you know how I always say, watch me or what? You'll be lost. <laughs> so I want you to watch me for a while. Put your hands in your lap, unless you're taking notes. Um, watch me. And, then, and then, then take my hand, and I will take you down the path with me. And, I'll, and we'll jump in there and leave with stuff that you can go back and share. Um, but before I get started, I just want to see who is in the room. Um, many of you I know personally and, uh, and so on. Um, but just so those of us that are listening and we can all figure it out, is um, if you work in elementary, in an elementary school, raise your hand. You see where you are. Uh, you work in middle school. High school. No high school people in the room. Um, I know some of you are, um, who's K-8? Anybody K-8? Mary and, and Susan over there. And um, who is classroom teacher? No class. So all you guys are missionaries. <laughs> so you go back and you save your teachers um, and show them the best of the best. And you're going to be so excited because I just 24 hours ago got this great little tool that make you look like super person and you always love when I give you that so I'm happy to to reveal that and I'll reveal that after the break <laughs> right um, so um, so everybody does everybody not everybody works in the library because I know your special ed um, teacher and who else anybody anything else but the library Pauline what do you do I'm the visual and performing arts coordinator here oh BAPA girl Awesome. I got stuff for you too. I'm a senior science and I'm the art coordinator here. Awesome. 
Okay, good. Well, welcome everybody. Welcome those of you following along at home. Um, so let's jump right in there. So remember, you're watching. Um, so teaching books. I've been talking about teaching books ever since it started myself as a, a as a librarian, as former district librarian of San Diego. For those of you who don't know me, I was district librarian in San Diego for 11 years um, before I went to um, Junior Library Guild. Um, but as I travel around the country doing the BER workshops and things like that, I've been teaching about teaching books all that time. And so I'm delighted to be able to spend more time learning about it myself. And you just not believe the stuff once you dig a little deeper that you'll find. Um, but we all, of course, love books. You know, I, I was talking with um, one of our retired colleagues this morning, and she was saying that um, they don't pay us enough, especially in the library. Um, for that to be the reason we get up and go to work, right? It's because we love the children and we love the books and we want to make those connections. And teaching books is the only thing that does that. It's, it's very different from these other two databases that you were given because it's that, it, it can be that spark. It can be that joy. You know, when you pass off the right book to the right kid and the light comes on, this can be that. Um, and um, not everybody can have Kate DiCamillo in their library, um, and or Avi, or Patricia Polacco. You can't just see that quilt, but you can. And that's what this is. So um, let's say, for example, um, you got one of the hot, who watches, anybody watch Jimmy Fallon? So he do, he's doing this book of the summer. Anybody heard of it? It's called Children of Children of Blood and Bone. So I'm going to type in Children of Blood and Bone. And here we have the book detail page. Oh, I'm going to, I don't want to be in a tutorial. So here I am, Children of Blood and Bone. And I get a, a little analysis um, summary so I know what this book is about. And um, then here I have all these resources. But I want you to hear from her. Um, so I'm going to do a meet the author book reading. And here she's going to introduce herself. Because when you look at this, this could be like the time that I thought Tony, Tony Buzio was hitting on me. Because I didn't know if it was a man or a woman or why she was contacting me. And T-O-M-I, we don't know. Who is that? What is that person? Um, who is that person? And now we're going to Hi, see her. Hi, my name is Tony Adiemi, and I am the author of Children of Blood and Bone. So Children of Blood and Bone is an epic West African fantasy. I like to pitch it as Black Panther with Matt. It's about a girl fighting to bring magic back to her people and it takes place in an <coughs> epic West African world with giant lions and beautiful magic and the Orisha, which are these really cool African gods and goddesses that a lot of people haven't experienced before. For me, I really wanted to write this book because when I saw a picture of the Orisha for the first time, I thought it was one of the most beautiful, magical things I'd ever seen. And the world and the story started coming together in my head in a way no story had before. So I really wanted to put that on the page, and it's been really fun to see other people get into that world as well. I'm just going to start by reading an excerpt, and I think it's just best to start at the beginning. So I'm going to do that right now. I try not to think of her, but when I do, I think of rice. When Mama was around, the hut always smelled of July rice. I think about the way her dark skin had glowed like the summer sun, the way her smile made Baba come alive, the way her white hair fuzzed and coiled, the untamed crown that breathed and black. I hear the miss she would tell me at night, Dan's laughter when they played ads on in the park, Baba's cries as the soldiers left a chain around her neck, her screams as they dragged her into the dark, the incantations that spewed from her mouth like lava. And if you want to know more, you'll have to read the book. Um, but that's just a teeny bit about the children of blood and bone. But many of you probably know about teaching books because you know about the audio name pronunciations. I mean, here we have this guy. How do you say all names? Or one of my favorites is this guy. Rick, don't say his name out loud. This is a test. So here he is. Say, I think you say his name in your head, and now I'm going to play it. Hi, my name is Rick Riordan. Long time, like in rye bread. Surprise! Uh, I'll play it again. Hi, my name is Rick Riordan. Long eye, like in rye bread. Long eye, like in rye bread. Um, 
And so you probably won't forget that again because you've got that in your head. There are over 2,400 names, authors and illustrators in here. Sorry if that makes you dizzy. Look away, look away. Um, but you can hear their voice, and many of them will tell you why, um, why they have their name. Here's one that we just recently posted. She had one of the most popular books of last year, um, The Hate You Give. It, new book, debut, six stars, New York Times bestseller list, being made into a movie. I mean, this girl is a high, uh, household name, regardless of what grade level. And here's her story. Hi, my name is Angie Thomas. My actual name is Angela, but for most of my life, everyone has called me Angie. I was actually named after my mom's childhood best friend, whose name was Angela. And my mom tells me that when they were little girls, they made a pact that when they would have daughters, they would name their daughters after one another. So my mom's best friend ended up having boys. So she didn't name any after my mom, but my mom kept the promise to name me Angela in honor of her. But when I was little, I was always Angie. And in the neighborhood, I was known as Baby Angie. I am an adult now, and people still call me Baby Angie, but that's because I was the youngest kid on the block, and I was always running around with the older kids. So getting into stuff I probably shouldn't have been doing, <laughs> but it was all good. They always called me Baby Angie. So I just took the baby off, and I decided to ask an author to Angie Thomas. But even now, to this day, I've had old friends from the neighborhood come to my book signing, and they've asked me to sign my book as Baby Angie. I try not to get upset. You can't lose something. Like so um, there's that. Um, then uh, another thing that you maybe you know, but you haven't really dug into is the Meet the Author movies. So there's a new one from David Wiesner, which is another name you might want to look up. How do you say that man's name? So it's David Wiesner. He has a new book called I Got It. And it's a wordless book, and you know how I feel about wordless books. Those are my favorites. And so in this one, they went into his home and made a video of him telling about where the story came from. So let's look at a little bit of that. So I got it came out <coughs> of a idea that I first encountered when I was a young child. It was an idea that in your mind, there can be this very long, elaborate narrative happening that outside of the real world may take mere seconds. For me, the scenario that worked best was standing in the outfield, waiting for the ball. As the ball drops, the child's mind goes to all these ever-increasing scenarios of the horrible things that can go wrong and make him drop the ball. Like all my books, I got it started in a sketchbook with thumbnail drawings. I'm laying out my 32 pages, trying to figure out what's the design of the book, how it's going to lay itself out visually. I do it many times. So that's just a little bit of that. So you can bring David Wiesner into your library or into your classroom. You can see the behind the scenes, see where these books came from. Um, because one of the, what's the number one, well, there's probably two, number, number one and two questions that kids ask authors. What are they? Why'd you write the book? And the other one? How much money do you make? Yeah, ask Kathy Kroll and some of those, and that's what they'll tell you. How much money do you make? Um, and so, uh, so they're, they're, this is another really amazing piece about teaching books. Um, because what teaching books is about, teaching books is about, um, it's a small team of, uh, that gives the um, equity of resources to give all readers an opportunity, regardless of where they live, of, of who is able to bring them in um, so that they can make connections to writers and illustrators at the moment that they're reading. And so today we're going to be looking at um, resources that you can use with stuff you already have um, and how to save them, how to share them, um, how to make lists ahead of time, um, 
how to connect them to curriculum. And when I leave, remember I said some of you are going to be missionaries, so you're going to go out and you're going to train everybody that you know. Because one of the things I think that's important about these state databases, and, and even with the portal, um, you know, Jonathan and them, they'll tell you, if we don't use these, what happens? We go lose them. So we want to make sure we're using them, and, but we also want it to be not an extra thing. So our, our hope at Teaching Books is that um, it will not only help kids find the magic and joy of reading and books, but it will also make things easier for you as an educator. And so that's what we're going to do today. So um, now you know why you want to know. So now's your time to figure out how to get in. So I'm going to ask you um, on your device, wherever you are, to go to teachingbooks.net slash California. And um, I, brought some, I brought some cards just to help you. Um, I have extra, so you might want to take some of these with you. But it says you already have access, and the website is right there dead in the middle. So you're going to go to teaching book slash California, and you're going to log in. Now, who has not already created an educator account to log in. Okay, just a, a few of you. All right, so you're going to, I might need you to help your neighbors. Uh, the good news is that because these are um, your email, if you use your work email there, um, it already knows to expect you coming. And so it will recognize your email address and lead you right through the login process. So you're going to go, what you want to do is create an educator login. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to do that. And then when you get there, it'll say welcome and it'll say your name. Those of you that are watching online, um, the Teaching Books team is standing by. So if you need help, you can email accounts at teachingbooks.net, and they'll help you. I'm trying to think who else. If you want to just contact a person, you guys are listening. So if there's another way you want them to contact, send me a note. But you should be able to get in. When you're at school, it'll be IP, uh, what's the word, authenticated. And so it'll know that you're at school. But the reason why you want a, an educator account is um, just like when you go browsing on a website, you're for shopping. Say so you're at Amazon or you're at wherever you are. And you find something you like and you want to put it in a wish list or you want to put it in the shopping cart. You want to save it. And so this is the same way. So you want your own account so you can save the things that you find. And so that later on, I'll show you what, another reason why you want to have it. And when you're, when you're in, look this way. And then I'll know that we're ready to move on. And Cindy's helping the folks in the room. What, uh, clarify, your question is what again? Title. Oh, for title? Mm -hmm. That, it, it doesn't matter. Okay. When it asks you for what's your title? No. But you do want to use your work email if possible because it, that's another way it authenticates that you have access. Where are you? In the I mean, but what district? Oh, okay. So it could be the university hasn't signed, uh, done their paperwork yet. So, um, Jonathan, is there a generic way for her to get in? And then you email me, and I'll pass the word back to whoever's in charge of that university, and we'll, we'll fix that. 
Anybody else got a problem? It, it made the account, but it didn't recognize the confirmation code. So does it say your name? OK, so then you're probably in. Oh, it won't. See how it says, welcome, Deb, now? So it doesn't say anything. Mm -mm. Everybody else? Everybody good? Your children are so old now. <laughs> wow. Sure, if you if you know one. If you're having trouble, send an email to accounts at teachingbooks.net if you're logged into your email. And someone is standing by and can help you. Let's see if they're telling me another way. Anybody else? Cindy, what's going on back there? We're trying to we have to access our work email. Oh. Okay. Is there someone close? Miss Mary, are you having trouble too? You should already be in. All right, for those of you who are ready, um, let's go ahead and do our first search. Yay! So I want you to think about, and you got a handout, you can write down some titles. I want you to think about a title that you're going to use or that you know a teacher uses. And you want to know what resources does Teaching Books have to help you with that book. So just type the title in in the big search bar. So say, for example, Wonder. You want a subject, you said? Nope. Just type in a title and show, see what happens. Let's just test that you're, you're in and you, you can do that. And then raise your hand if you're not in yet. Okay, I'll wait just a minute. And then we're going to look first. I'll, sh I'll do a little, I'll do some showing and then you do the going. All right, so everybody's in. All right, so once you're in, at the top you should see your name. So mine says, Welcome, Deb. And then on the home page, it should say the name of your school district. Like mine says California State Library. Everybody see that? All right, and then let's just, right, so you know you're in the right place. And then you've got my account over here. And so here's the reason, uh, one of the reasons why you want to do this because here you're going to have your list, you'll have your newsletters, you'll have your profile, all kind of things like that that you didn't have before. Um, so let me just give you a tour of the home page. So on the home page, this is where you're watching, um, and then I'm going to show and then you're going to go. So um, first of all, there's a little video tour, but you don't need that today because I'm here. But you might share that with the people when you go back to your, your classroom or your library or your your site where you are. Um, every day on Teaching Books you'll see um, two books that are featured. You'll see a literary calendar so if you want to know whose birthday it is. Sometimes we like to, you know, I tell people that, especially those people who work in the library or who work with a lot of books and you have choice, sometimes it's like going to DSW. You know, you just have too many choices and how are you supposed to pick, right? And when you're choosing books to work with kids, it's the same thing. How do you know what to pick? And so sometimes people pick from um, an author or illustrated birthday. So here you have author or illustrated birthdays um, on that home page. Then uh, I'm going to scroll down and then we have resources we can find, authors and illustrators. And then down at the bottom, you'll see where your access is provided, right? 
All right, so you have all that stuff. All right, so now watch me. I'm going to just enter right in this great big box in the middle, and I'm going to do a book that, that we love. What's a book we love? <gasps> I just listened to her last night. Uh, when Dixie. So the good thing about this, too, is it will also think for you. You don't have to type the whole thing. Or if you know, oh, you know, I don't know. It's got a dog in the title, <laughs> right? It'll help you a little bit. So, <clears throat> so here we have, again, we have our description. So we know, oh, yeah, that's the book I want, that one right there. Um, then we have the original content. So Teaching Books does... Um, several things that are original content. That's the stuff you're not going to find anywhere else. And that's one of the things I love about teaching books is they're the meet the author movies like we, show, we saw from Dave Wiesner um, where we go into Patricia Polacco's studio or we, um, we hear um, John Lewis talking or things like that. Um, so they do meet the author movies. Um, then there are the audio pronunciations. And anything that is original teaching books content will be you'll see a little logo of teaching books right there. And so you know that it was made there. The rest of the stuff comes from um, reputable sources. So you don't have to worry about, you know, Grandma Sue, who just loves this book so much. And she wrote these lesson plans for you. You don't have to worry about that because it wasn't her. Um, they came from a reputable resource like an association or a publisher or the author or something like that. So you can trust that you're getting good stuff. You don't have to weed through all that stuff and it's just all in one place. And so at the top in the, in the um, kind of like the table of contents of resources, you see all of these resources. There are 15 lesson plans for using this book. Um, 11 interviews, two movies, one book reading, um, and so on. Um, I don't know whose phone that is. Um, but we were talking about um, Kate DiCamillo. And um, so here is a Meet the Author movie of her. And she is reading from Because of Winn-Dixie. I'm going to read the first chapter of Because of Winn-Dixie, the first book that I wrote, chapter one. My name is India Opal Baloney. And last summer, my daddy, the preacher, sent me to the store for a box of macaroni and cheese, some white rice, and two tomatoes, and I came back with a dog. This is what happened. I walked into the produce section of the Winn grocery store to pick out my two tomatoes, and I almost bumped right into the store manager. He was standing there all red-faced, screaming and waving his arms around, who let a dog in here? He kept on shouting, who let a dirty dog in here? At first, I didn't see a dog. There were just a lot of vegetables rolling around on the floor, tomatoes and onions and green peppers, and there was what seemed like a whole army of Winn-Dixie employees running around waving their arms just the same way the store manager was waving his. And then the dog came running around the corner. You got to get goosebumps, don't you? Yeah. So um, another cool thing, and I'm just going to jump right in there and do that, is see this little thing at the top? This is Google Translate. So watch what happens when I do this. Now I'm going to choose Mung. And the whole page went mung. He was a big dog. And Whoop. ugly. And he looked like he was And now what happened look what happens to the his captions. Was hanging out and he was wagging his tail. He skidded to a stop and smiled right at me. I had never before in my life seen a dog smile. So we don't get Kate speaking in Hmong. Uh, or all of the other uh, languages that you can do it um, for, but you have options now. In the written. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's another cool little, that's a very cool little piece. So if we want to get back to the home page, I just click on the teaching books icon and it takes me back. So I can search for um, an author, I can search for it. Um, and at teaching books, authors and illustrators are the same. So you can look for an illustrator, you can look for an author, you can look for a title, um, and so on. So what I want everybody to do right now is do your first search and choose um, a book or an author and search for it and see what you get and then you'll see all the different resources that you might choose. Anybody have a question before I say go and do this? You got this. Got it? 
You're chomping at the bit to do it. I know you are. So do it and then look at what resources that you have. Look at all the different kinds of resources that you have. You'll see book trailers, you'll see um, book readings, you'll see videos, you'll see lesson plans, you'll see vocabulary. So somebody give me a title of something that you've looked up. Lauren? Fish in a tree. So there's Fish in a Tree. That's one of those books that it's blue, right? Yeah. Those of you who've heard me for a while, you know what I say about blue covers. Better have a tissue. Um, so, yeah, so here we have um, Fish in a Tree. We've got seven lesson plans, three book of tradings, uh, readings, a trailer. So there are all kinds of ways you can use that stuff. So um, you can use it for your book talks. You can use it to get them interested. Maybe if you're the librarian and you only have 30 minutes with your class, you just play that piece and then off they go. You, you can have a featured author. You can have a featured illustrator. If you're a classroom teacher, it might be what you start your lessons with, um, depending on what the resource is. It may be where you get your lessons. I mean, why do it the hard way? Somebody else already wrote these things, and they're vetted, and you can use them, right? Anybody look up a book that wasn't there? No? It went what? It didn't come right up. I had to go to, I had to scroll down to like add. Oh, okay. But you found it? Yes. Okay. And then to get back, you can just click on the Teaching Books logo and it takes you right back to the beginning. Um, so now let me show you um, a really surprising thing. So very, on the home page, just before you get to the Connect With Us, Here's the new materials. 987 resources have been added in the last 30 days. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. 91,000 total resources. Um, and so if you click right there, you'll see what's new. And so, for example, you can see five new audio pronunciations, 495 author interviews, 26 book trailers. 71 book readings. So where did I go? I was on the home page and I scrolled all the way down past the white boxes just before it gets to the dark blue. 987 resources. So if you're looking for new, that's an easy way to go um, to find those things. Um, there are lots of ways that we can search. Did you see the search box also on the, on the home page? So I can click right here and I can click by, um, find me a book, find me an author, a subject. I can also search by awards. Or I can do an advanced search. Um, let's do, for example, we've talked about authors and we talked about illustrators. Let's do a subject search. So I'm going to search for a subject. So you watch me and then you can do it yourself. So what subject do we want to search? What do we feel like? Okay. We'll see what happens. We have 32 books. Oh, that's a good one. That's one of my favorites right off the top. Good job. Um, so Kathy said, um, uh, determination, we got 32 matching books. And one of the things it does when you do a search like that is it will automatically default to the number of resources. So the ones with the most resources will be at the top. Um, and then you can click on the down arrow and say, okay, give me the most recent. Or you can flip it and get the oldest. You know, maybe you're, you're looking for an older book that you might already have. Um, you can also um, sort it by reading level. 
But now look on the right-hand side. Now we can narrow our results. At this point, we can say, oh, well, okay, I, I only want pre-K to 2, so I'm going to narrow that down, and it only took one book out. Or did it take any? I forget. Um, then I can choose um, a curricular area. Show me, uh, or I can choose a genre, or I can narrow it by a cultural area, or even a format. Or I can say, uh, really, I'm just looking for a book that has lesson plans because they're coming in in 10 minutes, right? So I click on the ones that have lesson plans, and then boom, now I'm down to four. So there you go. So you're looking for a book on determination for pre-K to 2 with lesson plans, and now you have these right here. And it's just as simple as that. All right, now I want you to do the same thing. Whether you're at home or you're in the room, let's do, let's go back. Um, we're going to do a search by subject. And choose a subject. It can be, it can be a subject, like Kathy said, uh, determination, or it could be a content area. Or it can be, like the other day I was doing one on vacations for the state library. Um, I can do one on immigration. And then narrow your results and see what you come up with. All right, when you find something, I want you to turn to your neighbor and share that. What did you find? How are you doing down here? No, you're okay. So what are you I looking for? On, uh, when, I, when I was watching you, one of them... Okay, I'm back. Uh, so one of the things that came up in the searching um, and the narrowing is, okay, now I want to narrow it by reading level. I want to decide that. So what we're going to do now is an advanced search. So watch me first. Um, up here at the top, you see where it says advanced search? So I'm going to click on that. Um, I'm going to put my... Uh, mystery. Well, in that case, then I can come, actually come down here and I can say, I want a mystery. I want it to be um, a lexile of whichever you pick. And I want it to be, hmm, do we care? Yeah, we, we got to narrow it down. Let's narrow it down. Let's go Oh, for VAPA, let's do music and see what happens. And then I'm going to scroll down and say go. Oh, I have to select my grade level. So I'll go first to fifth. All right, so well, it gave me one book because I was very specific, right? So that's what happened. So that bing, 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 we have a winner. Right, 
So that was Lexile, curricular area music, curricula um, genre mystery, and so on. So I could go back and take one of those out and say, okay, not just mystery, books in general, and say go. And now I have 26 books. Make sense? Questions? All right. So now I want you to do an advanced search on your own. So choose an advanced search. And then you can see that you can search for all kind of things. You can just look for original teaching books resources. Or you can say, hey, I want to do a reader's theater. I want to do a reader's theater for fourth to eighth grade. And I want it to be in social studies. And let's see what we get. And say go. So now I got 62. So I have all these reader's theater scripts that I can use with my kids for social studies. So I'll give you a minute to play around with that. And then I'll let you share out what you found and then I'm going to give you some now what so that you would go, oh, oh no. Anybody stuck? Who's found something cool? I only found one of what I searched for. You found one of what you searched for? Yeah. It was uh, original subject script with disabilities, grade level 4 through 8, Lexile 500 to 700 um, graphic novels. Ah. And so, knowing what I know, you know about the, that basket, you can see why it's, you came back with one. So if you were, if, if the whole point, so then when you get narrowed it down, she said, for those of you who are listening, they can't, couldn't hear what she said, she had disability as her subject, um, grades four to eight, graphic novel, and then she also threw in Lexile. And when she did that, it narrowed it all the way down to one. So it's very, it's very specific at that point. Um, if you need a bigger catch, then you've got to let loose of one of your parameters in order to find the things that you're looking for. Um, another thing you might notice when you're doing this is that you can also look for things that have just been recently added. And so here are the things that are recently added. So you can look at those as well. All right, uh, who's found, anybody found a resource that you especially love? Or one you want to try? Or tell somebody? Kathy said she found, what did you say you found, you found a craft and what else you found? The front load before reading the book and you know that's so hard. Not everybody has all, comes with all that information when you're going to share a book. I, I, you know, I've told this story to you before, but remember when um, Alan Say's uh, book, uh, the picture book about the um, internment camps, the Japanese internment camps, and I didn't, it was before I came to California, and I didn't know anything about that stuff. So I read that book and I went, uh, I don't know, I don't understand it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get this book. And then I got out here and got involved in the curriculum and I learned about the Japanese internment camps. And then I went back and read that book and the light went, oh. 
And so sometimes we do have to front load that stuff. And so this, um, this resource will help you do that. Um, all right, so now let's do one more thing. Once you have found these things and you think, oh my gosh, I want people to know about these, um, because that's your next step, right? Remember, because you're going to be sharing, is once you find these things, no matter where you are, when, you, when you're at a resource, you'll see a thing that says something like rate and share, or share this thing. And so when you click on that, yeah, wait for it, da da these are all the ways you can share those materials. So you can either share a whole book or one particular material. So you can do it for flipped learning. You can do it for a blended learning. You can do it for the kid who was absent. You can do it to front load or back load that information. You can send it home to parents. Um, if you're the, in the library and you know that Miss Jones always does um, wonder um, in September, you can send it to her and it'll be waiting for her when she comes back to school. Um, and so you can either send it in an email, you can actually text somebody and send them that resource. Um, you can create a QR flyer um, or a bookmark. You can put it, how, who's using Google Classroom? You can send it to Google Classroom. Um, you can add it to your calendar. You bump into, say you bump into something um, and you know in April you want to do a poetry special unit. You can put it in your April calendar now and not think about it again until April. How cool is that? Um, you can share it out on Facebook or Twitter. Um, you can get a permanent link and put it in a, a, a newsletter article or in an email that you might write. And here's the kicker on top of that. Not only are you sharing that resource, but whoever gets it doesn't have to be logged in. So once you're in, you're in. So you share that resource and so you don't have to worry about mom sending you a note. You sent this home and I don't know how to get in it. Once you send that, they're in. So what amazing thing to put in your PTA newsletters or in your department newsletters and you can increase that literacy at home because they'll, they can, you know, it can go right to their phone and they as a family can watch that video or watch that, uh, listen to that uh, author talking about where, uh, where it came from. So you can do that with, you can do that with anything. Um, so even if you are going back to some of the books that we looked at earlier. So here's Wonder. We looked at Wonder. Here's Wonder. And so here you see Share This Page. And then you can't see it because of the, the screen that I'm using right here. But on your, at home and, uh, and on your device, there's a, a yellow bar across the bottom and then up the right-hand side of the website. And you can immediately share all whatever it is that you're looking at. So you're on that page. So I want to share this page. I click share this page. And then it brings this box up. And then when I click the QR flyer, watch. I wish Nick was here so y'all could, you could see your face. Da da. So then all they have to do is scan that code and boom, they have those resources. You can also print it. Isn't that awesome? This is the part where we clap. Yay! Yeah, so awesome. Um, and so you don't have to say, oh, I don't have time to go look for it. It's right there. Just, you know, and a lot of people do, what they do is they print that stuff out and they put it in the book. And so when a kid goes home, that, it's right there. And, and, you know, it's in the inside cover of the book. Um, And there are other things that you could do with it too, but it's about five till, and you've been sitting for 50 <coughs> minutes. So um, let's take a break, and when we come back, I'm going to show you not only um, a little bit more about the whole sharing tool piece, we're going to go into curriculum, and I'm going to give you the tools for uh, making the missionaries for the people who aren't here. Um, so. We'll do that when we come back. Five minutes. Take a little break. Do your hands. And uh, we'll come back in five minutes. And we're back. 
And, and so I said before the break, um, I would um, give you a tool that you're going to go, oh, but I'll show you that in a minute. <laughs> right. Um, okay, so the first thing I want to do is um, talk to you about databases. People use them and or they don't use them, mostly for three reasons. One is they use Google. Why? It's easy. it's easy. You click on your browser and there it is, right? But it's easy to get to. It is not easy. You know, it's like Neil Gaiman says. You can get so many more answers when you're just wandering out there in the wilderness. Um, but if you know where to go, you get the right answers and you get them quickly. It's like uh, Regina Powers in uh, Anaheim. She went in. To, uh, she was in her library, and there were two boys eating a bag of Cheetos in the library, which you know is just bad. That is a cardinal sin. Do not eat Cheetos in the library. They leave traces. You've seen the commercials, right? And uh, she says, you know, what are you guys doing? And they said, oh, we got to do a, a, a report on Venezuela. And she said, oh, if you put those Cheetos up, I'm going to give you an A because I'm going to give you the answers to what you need. And so she took them to Culturegrams, which is another one of the state databases. And they went like little fish, mouths just wide open. And so those Cheetos went away. <laughs> And they went, holy cow, we feel so stupid because we've been sitting here for 15 minutes trying to figure out what should we be looking at to get the answers to our questions. And there it was all along. Um, <clears throat> so um, one of the things that happened as a result of this um, state online resources was all the districts had to fill out a, a form. So for those of you who are listening, no matter where you are, your district or your county or your university or, um, has to fill out this form. So it is actually teachingbooks.net slash CA set up. CA set up. So somebody in your district, your, um, whether it's a charter school, a private school, public library, college, university, has to set that up so that Britannica, ProQuest, and Teaching Books can do all that back office stuff that I don't even all understand and everybody can have access and they'll recognize you whether you're at school or you're at home and so somebody needs that so if you are listening out there in the world and you you're having trouble accessing it could be this hasn't been done yet so um, you know what they say about the squeaky wheel do it squeak squeak away if it hasn't been done yet. And, and it was a good thing, bad thing that this rolled out at the end of, um, well, in, in May, April, May, when it actually happened, um, because it gave lots of people time to start to get it settled, to figure out the weird things, because California's never had anything like this. You know, like Cindy said at the beginning, there's no one big portal where everybody goes. Like in Ohio, where I live, there's one portal and everybody goes right there. But there was no infrastructure for this thing. Um, and so all this stuff has to be done, but at the same time, everybody's, you know, it's summer, it's a relaxed schedule. And so sometimes um, it didn't happen because the people who knew the answers to the questions were on vacation or didn't get the right email or whatever. So you can help by, by helping them do that. And so that's catbooks.net slash CA setup. And it will help you get Britannica and ProQuest and teaching books all set up not just teaching books. All right, and so then the next thing I want to show you is the, the, oh, not yet. Not yet. Um, well, yeah, I'll show you now. Um, is teachingbooks.net slash interactive tutorial. No, that's not what I wanted to show you next. Just edit this out if you make a movie. So I want to show you teaching book because I was talking about access. Teachingbooks.net slash embed. E-M-B-E-D. So they use Google because they think it's easier. The second thing is um, they don't know where it is. They don't know that they, and they often don't know they have it. So they don't use it. Uh, like New York State. New York State has teachingbooks.net. 
And every year when I go to Long Island, there are people in my workshops, and I say, you have this, and they look at each other and they go, did you know we had this? Um, it happens all the time. Um, and so, or you know you had it and then you forgot. Um, because access points are really important. And so, um, it's just like everything else. If there's more than one, there's more than one way to do it. And so, what Teaching Books has actually done is um, created this embed page. And on the embed page, you have all these different buttons that you can put into your website, whether it's your library website or your department's website or um, whatever, all those things. So if you just, you want a button just to show me the lesson plans, show me the diverse books, show me the meet the author videos, whatever. All that, you can just put this button, copy the code, embed the button into your website. It's all right there. Um, another place that you, um, we, we looked at earlier the everyday content, the two different books. Um, and the literary calendar. Those are widgets and you can copy that code and you can put that on your website or your blog or whatever. Um, if you use Symbaloo, you can get Symbaloo tiles. You can get the logo or if you just want one button, you can get the one button and put it on your website um, or in your newsletters or whatever. And then there's um, instructional technology integration. Um, how, who's on Destiny. Most people are on Destiny and teachers, you probably, you may not know. Um, but Destiny is um, one of the big um, resources that you might use um, where it's integrated with your catalog and you can add teaching books and Britannica and the ProQuest products from the state into Destiny in your OneSearch or in your Destiny Discover. And so when you're looking for a book, you'll find those things too. Do you, need, you want me to show you? Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna pull up San Diego. So I'm gonna go destiny.sandy.net, but you wouldn't have to type that in if you had your catalog. All right, and you can see they, that they've already embedded some buttons into their home page for the district. Um, and you have these same kind of buttons and these things in the San Diego County Office portal, right? So you have those kind of things too. But say for example, um, uh, Mary, let's, we'll do Mary School since she's right here. Um, uh, oh, there it is. I did K through eight, but it took me a while. All right, so, um, so in, at Mary School, we have these on the outside, right? Um, so here's her Colton Grams, here's her teachingbooks.net, but if I go inside the catalog, I can either using this or Destiny Discover, I can do a search for Harry Potter. And when I click on it, oh wait, go back. Here I have one search, and if I click get results, now I say show, and then here are all the Harry Potter teaching books resources. So it's embedded in your library catalog too, and so when I click on it, it takes me out to teaching books where I have those resources and I can go from there. Cool? Um, so all that integration stuff is down in here. Now some of you are, like I just learned today, San Diego Unified is, has Clever now. Yeah, Who else uses Carl. Clever? So that's coming. It also integrates with Google Classroom. So all, and, and how to do that is there. So if you need um, help with IT of that, you can contact accounts at teachingbooks.net and they will help your IT person with that. But if you click on it, it'll give you some direction about how to do that. So all those technologies are, 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 are happening. All right, now, here, I'll come back to that maybe later. Here's my little, ta-da! Um, 
So here's your tool to go back so you don't have to worry about being an expert at this database. Um, this was just released yesterday and you go to teachingbooks.net slash interactive tutorial. Interactive tutorial. And what it does is, you know how sometimes, who's on Pinterest? And who was afraid to go on Pinterest? Because why? It's overwhelming and you go down this rabbit hole and you don't know which path to take, <laughs> right? You have to put a timer on. You just be there forever. And so what Teaching Books did was they made this little tutorial so you can get a taste of what is there, how to use it, before you get the whole shebang. So it's kind of like a, a little scooped out pocket and so in small doses you you get started. Um, and so if we're starting with the get started, it's exactly what the things that we're going to be talk what we talked about in the first hour, and then we're going to do the second part. So in the first steps, we did search, which is what we first learned, right? And then we browsed a little, and then we just talked about sharing, right? And so all of that is right here. So when I do it now, and say, let's do hate you give. It still says I'm in tutorial mode. So I can't go too far down the path. So here I have the hate you give. Etc. And then I go back to my get started and I can search some more till I get comfortable with the searching. Then I can browse. I can browse by grade level, I can browse by subject area, by genre, and it lets me practice that stuff. So for example, um, Latino. I'm going to browse for Latino resources. And so it came up with 1,281 and you know we can narrow them down at this point. So it gives you a chance to kind of practice that before you get overwhelmed. And then the third thing in the get started is it talks to you about the share and access. So it shows you how you can share via a text. And so you can just go in here, here's an example, put my name, put my phone number, whoops, that's not my phone number, and we get all these calls. Verified it, now it sent me a text. Unless I put the wrong phone number down, which maybe I did because it didn't come through. <laughs> um, but if I had put in my right phone number, I'd have a text right now. And because I shared it, what does that mean to the recipient? They can get right in. They can get right in. It's going to be right there on their phone or their iPad or wherever you sent that thing. Um, that means if I wanted to, I could just share that. I can just copy it and I can dump it in somewhere else. Um, here again is our QR code bookmarker. So I print these out and off I go. I can also change my language at this point. So now I can say, oh, let's put this in Arabic. And so now my bookmarker is in Arabic. Isn't that awesome? I know. All right, so I close that window. And so now I can either say, yeah, okay, kind of got it, but I'm not sure. So I can go back to any of these parts if I want to. And then, okay, I've decided I got this. So now I can continue the tutorial. Now it's going to dig me deeper. And that's what we're going to do in this second piece, is we're going to learn to dig a little deeper into teaching books. Um, so now I'm going to look at instructional uses. And that's great, because we've got people in here who do all kind of different things. We've got special ed, and we've got um, visual and performing arts. We have um, people who work with kids as English as a second language. And so now what we're going to do is explore instructional uses. Um, so what I want everybody, um, whether you're here or you're at home, is I want you to, to uh, get to teachingbooks.net slash interactive tutorial and then I want you to watch me. I'm going to do it first and then, then you'll go. All right. So 
um, explore instructional uses. So let's do ELL because that's so important. Um, and I just heard recently that um, instead of having a second language being a bad thing, it's finally being a good thing. So um, that it's about time is what I'm going to say in my over here personal voice. Um, of course, if, if um, Nick was here, he would say the same thing. Um, so here are some ways you could use the resources at Teaching Books um, with English language learners. So here in this one, for example, we can listen um, about the cultural influence of King for a Day. Or we can read this written interview by Gary Soto. Or we can build background knowledge like we were talking about earlier um, by uh, reading about Cuba's struggle with um, war in um, Margarita Engel's book. Or we can get more perspective by looking at these two different books, a picture book and um, a chapter book. We can look at this graphic novel. And one thing I didn't talk about yet, but see how this says additional vocabulary list? One of the things that Teaching Books does is it pairs, um, it partners with um, vocabulary.com. And so you can actually get vocabulary to go with these books from the book itself. Um, so that's what that, um, whoops, I lost my, I came out of my tutorial. I will. Um, so the, we pair, partner with uh, vocabulary.com to get uh, vocabulary activities and real vocabulary lessons from, from them. So for, um, Wonder, for example, I know, I just looked at that the other day. So all the examples, all the vocabulary came from the book itself and the sentence it was used in. So that's all in context. Um, interactive to all right. Um, all right, so I'm in Dig Deeper. Uh, I can also, let's do music. So here I have ideas about how I might use um, it in music. And you see this little one up here at the top? Those of you in the, uh, in the back and at home, you probably can't see that. Um, digital literacy resources that extend music concepts and understanding. Where did that come from? That came from the National Core Art Standards. So everything that's in here is connected to Common Core. It's connected to national standards. It's not just, oh, this is so fun. We should do this, right? So it's there for a, a curriculum reason. So it supports the, the national standards. So we might listen to Margarita do a, a book reading of Dream, Drum, Dream Girl. Um, or we might um, listen to Christopher Myers talk about the backstory um, in his book Jazz, et cetera. And so you have it for world languages and science and all those things. So let's take a minute, and uh, whether you're here or you're at home, and choose a subject area and dig a little deeper. What do you find? How can you use it? Martina and the Beautiful Card Cards? She's amazing. And then if you click back to dig deeper, you can get back to exploring instructional uses. So for all these instructional um, co um, content areas, um, you'll have examples of how you might use it. I, uh, years ago, well, I know exactly what year it was. It was the year I went to Cajon Valley. Some of you remember that year. And um, I was working with, uh, they are just elementary and middle school, and I was at a middle school one day, and 
uh, in the library, and the, I was talking to a middle school social studies teacher, and she said, I don't have time to come to the library. I have curriculum to cover. And I said, in my head, I'm thinking, I have a shovel. I'll help you, right? Um, that was the year I joined the Social Studies Council, the National Association, and it, there was a magazine, and, and there, there was an article about connecting the classroom to the library, and I took it down to her and I said, here's what I'm showing you. Here's, this is what I was talking about. I don't have a secret agenda. I'm just trying to help you do what you do easier so you can go home at night and watch the Padres, right? Uh, I don't want you to work 20 hours a day. I'm here to be your partner. And so that's what these things will help you. They'll give you the verbiage. They'll give you the language. The examples, um, if you're in the library or if you're in curriculum and you're trying to reach out to content areas, what do you say? How do you hook them um, to get to want to use these things? Anybody got a comment or a question at this point? All right, the next step in digging deeper then is um, implementing these literacy connections. And you can see on the screen where I am that there are all kinds of more. This is going a little bit deeper. So one of the things that I want to jump in, this is the place where you watch, is the text complexity. Um, because some of you are looking for books by um, difficulty. And so one of the things that Teaching Books has done is they um, have created a text complexity toolkit. And in this toolkit, there are um, qualitative and quantitative measures um, that these books are analyzed under so that you can say, oh, you need to, you're going to need to have a little bit more um, knowledge before you read this book. Or you don't, this book is easy to read. But the cultural significance of this story is important. You know, like I was saying with the Alan Say kind of book. And these are all done, they're um, what we call uh, crowdsourced. So all the educators who are using this are doing them. So as they read a book, then they say, oh, the pictures are really, really important in this book. Or there aren't any pictures in it, and so this gets a zero. Or the cultural, what you have to know in order to understand. like. I was reading a book not too long ago and I thought the culture for this is off the chart because it was before my time and, um, and the, the specific words the author was using in the book, I thought, oh, I've got to have a little background knowledge about this time period or this stuff is going right over my head because it, it might be before the kid was born or whatever. So one of the things that they've done to help you with that is there um, there's a rubric and a worksheet for both informational books and literary books how do you look at these books and decide on their text complexity there's also videos that you can watch um, as as well um, they've been connected with um, Fountas and Pinnell with HS with Lexiles um, there are questions that will guide you like when I click right here what do you want your students to accomplish with the text and how will you implement this? How will you guide your, st your students to construct meaning? Which readers will connect deeply with this text and where does it fit? Um, and so on. So all of these things are, are added into the value of, of these books. Um, we also think that diversity is really important. And so there is a section of diverse books at Teaching Books. So you can either go into the diversity and you can look at an award. Like, did you know there was an Asian Pacific Award for Literature? Um, so here are the winners. 77 books sorted by the number of resources. Um, or you can just click, say, for example, on American Indian in the, the colored boxes. And these are books that may not necessarily have won an award, but they're still a respected book and you might find it in your library or in your classroom. And then once you get this far, again, you can narrow your results. But let's, let's just look at Thunder Boy since it's right here. And then we can look at the text complexity for this particular title. So it tells me there's 518 words. It's at an HS of 2.5, a Lexile of 420. And then here's my text complexity. 
Um, so it's, it's moderately difficult in the meaning and the text um, organization. Way over here, it's not so hard with the visual fic, um, features and the vocabulary and the so on, and moderately into life experiences and cultural knowledge. So that might help you decide, well, this book's too hard, it's too easy for what in my needs. Um, then if you want to, you can do it yourself. You can just click right there, and then look what happens. I've got to be logged in in order to do that. Um, cool? This is how you get to be a wow, awesome. Um, all right, so we've done, uh, oh, let's do the balanced literacy. So in this one, we're going to see things like content-rich nonfiction, which is one of the hardest things to get good resources to go with. Um, but of course, this is one of the most popular things. So whether it's elementary, because everybody loves to read nonfiction in element, elementary, but at middle and high school, they're doing all this research. So where is the stuff to help support that? Um, so sometimes it can be in, in this resource. And so here we have outstanding nonfiction. So you can get a list. Here are text exemplars. You choose your grade band and you'll get your books. And then here are paired fiction and nonfiction text sets. There's also author's purpose and thoughtful reading, but I'm going to skip those for now because I don't want us to lose time till we get to this one. So we've looked at all this cool stuff, and then we talked about sharing it. We talked about why we want to use it, but we can also take this stuff and build our own lists and keep it. Uh, and then you can share all those lists. So, for example, here is a grade five classroom library. And so once. Once I have found books that I like, I can put that in my own list. So I can click right here, and it's going to walk me in. And at this point, it's going to make me log in, because you can't save it unless you're logged in, right? So we're going to go back in just a few minutes, and we're going to actually do this build the custom reading list. Um, and so. It can be a list that you send home for the summer. It can be a list for the semester. Um, we worked with, um, we can build a list, and it's sitting there in your district profile. And so, Miss, Bill, Miss Battle of the Books, mm -hmm. you can, exactly what you want to do. You want to build your list, and all those resources are there, and then you send them out to whoever needs them. Right? So let's do that. Um, once we've done that and we've decided, yeah, we're done, we can end our tutorial or we want to sign in, and then we're going to put our work email. So you can do that too now because I know you're chomping at the bit. Okay, so now I'm in here. and. And everybody look up here at the top. So I got my account, and now I have my list. So I've already made some lists. So let's just look at what we're talking about here with the list. So I made my list, and this is the one I made. Um, I made this list recently for um, the state library. Um, she said, do a little search on vacation. And so I did. And then I put all these in a list, K to 12. Not everyone goes to Europe or summer camp, so what do other kids do in the summer? Choose from this diverse selection of books, K-12, to and find resources that your readers can really connect to. Um, um, and so then I have 115 items on this list. Then, look at this, I can analyze my list. So now it's telling me that my list, the average lexile of this list of books is 676. And here's my um, qualitative measures. Here's my genre count. 
So I've got 111 books that are in English language arts, but only seven on history. And so if I was trying to get history, I got to go back to the, I got to look some more. Um, genre. So I can see where my gaps are in my list. Um, and then there's a summary. I've got 86 videos, 50 book readings, 130 lesson plans for a total of 826. And there's a, not for a total, and there's a total of 826 resources in that list. And then here's for all that particular book for, that are in this list. Um, so that's just the one, that's the one list. Now, once I've got this list, so, for example, here, here we are in California, Eureka Book Awards, you know, which is nonfiction. It's K to 12. Here's my list, but I can also share this list. So I share this list, and here, again, I got a permanent link. I got a code to embed, and I can share it all these different ways. I can make my QR flyer, and here it gives, you know, 480 resources. Here's a list. I scan this and remember what happens when I scan it. I get everything and I don't have to do anything. I'm in. Um, cool? Alright, so how do I put a book in a list? That's your next question, right? So let's do this. Um, uh, let me go to my list. I'm going to go account my list. And I have a list on refugees. So let's say I think, ooh, did I put that book refugee on this list? So I can click right there. And then I can say add to a custom reading list. And it tells me, oh, you already have it on this one. Then I think, oh, wait, maybe I want it on another list so I can add it right there or not. And then add it to my list. And now it's there. I can edit or view the list. And that's how easy that is. Um, if I'm doing an advanced search and, um, and I've got a bunch of books or I'm doing a subject search, um, let's see, somebody said determination earlier. Determination. See where it says uh, add multiple titles? I can click add multiple titles and then I can just select them all and then unselect the ones I don't want or I can click, 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 click. So I can do it in a big long list like that. Yes? All right, so now you have classwork. I want everybody to um, think of what's my first list. And you can do it, don't do it yet. You can do it one of two ways. You can actually search for a list. Um, say you can take a list that's already there or you can just create a new one. But pick a list. You can either start from a book that you've already been working for, like you've got your Battle of the Books list. So say you've got Misty and you want to put Misty so you're going to add it to a custom reading list. You're going to create a new list, add it to the list. I'm going to um, edit it because I want to add why I'm making this list. So now I can name it and I can call it Battle of the Books 2018. And then I can say what it is, Books and Resources for 218, Battle of the Books, etc. And you want to be sure you save it. So make sure you click that Save button. And then once you've done that, you can either add titles right here or you can do a search and add them, add them, add them, add them, add them. Okay? So I want everybody to make a list and check it twice. No, just make a list. Once you start making a list, I'm doing that cardinal rule, talking while you're supposed to be working. Um,
once you add it, you can also add notes. So you can say, um, Jennifer would love this book, or give this to Mr. Jones. So you can even add notes within the, the list itself. All right, so see on this screen, see where I have this box now? Yeah, click, to click to add note. Uh, you can put fourth grade team or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then just be sure that you click save and then it'll be there. So everybody made a list? Anybody having trouble? One of the things that you might not know is um, this year, the California Young Reader Medal, and many of you I know you do that, um, the committee has decided not to create the resource book anymore because the resources are so often readily available out there. So, ta-da! One of the first lists you might want to make is the California Reader Medal. So all you have to do is go to teachingbooks.net, go to the home page, and right there on the front, it's right there. So Teaching Books already made a list of the primary division. Here are all the books. So all you want to do is duplicate that into your own list. And now you have all those in your own list. And save it. Now you can view your list. And you can create your flyer, you can share it, you can, et cetera. You can analyze it. So in the primary division, it's a Lexile of average 510. Remember, there's only three books, but there's 41 resources for those three books. So everything you need to do it is right there. For those of you watching at home, I really would like to walk out there and help those people, but they've chained me to this podium. <laughs> it goes against what I would normally do, and I just want the record to show that. <clears throat>
Yes. Where did you go when you were showing? Balancing literacy. Is that where we go? We want to see all those books in our custom list. Will it do that for us? Will it tell you if it's? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, uh, her question is, will it show me, it will it analyze my list yeah. to see if it's c complex enough? So I just look at my list um, and view it. And then look, you want to look for analysis of text complexity okay. for this okay. list. I didn't have all 10. Okay. Yep. And then just scroll down and it'll tell you all those things that you want to know. And then the details for all the books. The I can share this. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So in this section, we have dug a little deeper, and we've done and we've looked at instructional uses and how we might use them in different subject areas, um, from ELL to world language to music. We've looked at literacy connections like um, paired text. Um, we've looked at um, diversity and making sure everybody feels welcome. We've um, built list and looked at how to tell if the lists are balanced, et cetera. Um, who's had what I call a, an aha moment, where the light came on and you went, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I needed? Who, who has had that and would share? Well, mine's easy. It's the Battle of the Books. Um, another friend of mine in a different school district, we are challenging our fifth and sixth graders to read 10 books, and then we're going to have a competition, friendly competition. So they're having a, a, for those of you listening at home, they're having a battle of the books. They challenge another school district read and to read 10 books, the same 10 books. Mm -hmm. And so now she's got her resources for the 10 books and she can send them to the other district. They can talk about them together. Mm -hmm. Have practice. Have practice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Send it home so the parents can help support that. Yeah. Uh, put it in multiple languages. Um, anybody else? So one of the things you've got on your handout, for those of you that are here with a handout, you've got um, your ha aha moments. How can you use this stuff? I mean, it's the one thing to have it, but how are you going to use it? Anybody? Anybody else, I mean? Sorry. Um, a couple of years ago when I had just, I can use so much more now from today, but I created a multicultural um, list for a teacher that was using all these books and I was able Took my group. Oh, that's what I did. Is I took the things from here, and then I used Destiny to create a resource. List yes. And all of it with the teacher, and now she has it forever, and I'm no longer at that school, so it works out really good. Oh. Right. So as you create resource lists, if you're in Destiny, you can scan things into a list. Yeah. You know, just scan the barcode, and boom, you create the list. So you can do that. Um, yeah. And then you ha once you have it, you have it. Somebody else? How many people have already shared a resource with somebody who's not in this room? Uh-huh, uh-huh. I was just browsing through all of these. It said browse everything, and I found one that connects you to books that have apps. And yes. a lot of times the apps make things more, access more accessible for students with um, special education needs. Absolutely. And so just being able to go directly to ones that are, I know are going to be more accessible um, speeds up the process a little bit for me. Yes, it does. It's definitely helpful. But yes, I'm going to be sharing this as soon as I get home. Book apps, awesome. awesome. Or readers theater. You know, the more you involve <coughs> your readers in what it is that they've got in their hands, you know, sharing those backstories. Um, anything else you want to share before we go a, a little bit further? And before you're bleary and you need to go to happy hour at 3 o'clock, um, I want to remind you of a few things. Um, one is um, 
the, the teaching books tutorial, the, um, you go to teachingbooks.net slash interactive tutorial, and you got, it'll help you share what you're learning. So what I would do is, um, whether you're a teacher or you're a colleague or you're the library person, go back to your administration and say, hey, I did this two-hour thing today, and I cannot wait to tell people. I give me 15 minutes. Give me 10 minutes. And so in that 10 minutes, you, um, you pull that interactive thing up, and you play the four and a half minute video so they know why they care, right? Because it'll play a little bit of video, it'll do a little bit of author pronunciation, it'll talk about how they can share the list with everybody, moms, dads, grandpa, grandma Sue, who's at home writing lesson plans because she can't retire, really. Um, uh, it'll give you all that stuff. It'll talk about all that stuff kind of in a nutshell. And then you can talk about, here, here's what I want you to do on your own. Create your login so you can do this stuff. Then you search, you browse, you share. When you feel comfortable with that, you move to the next section, which is dig deeper. And you look at how to use it in instruction. You look at um, the literacy connections. You build your custom list so you have that stuff when you want it. And then you can um, exit the tutorial and and start using it. And they can do that at their own, you know, on their own, and not get too far down the rabbit hole and um, and forget about those things. Let me show you a couple of other resources that are on the website. Um, under help and support, under help and support, you've got the how to use, but you're going to see, you see some of this. Does this look familiar? Uh-huh, because it was in the thing that we just looked at. Um, the share and promote. So here's where you'll see the embedding tools. Um, you'll see prom some promotional strategies. But those of you that are kind of the boss of your building, you're probably going to want this where it says access directions. Because right here, it says email access directions to a colleague. And what it will do is it will generate a letter. And so you can um, enter your email. It'll send um, that email. It'll know who you are and where you are. And it'll create an email that says, here's your username, here's your password. And boom. And so you can send it to your parents. You can send it to your colleagues. You can send it to um, you, the, well, parents and colleagues. That's pretty much everybody that, that you might want to send that to. Um, there also is a page for video tutorials where all those things that you know that you want to know. Here's the the five minute overview, how to create a custom list, how to create a login, and so on. How to use it in Google Classroom. There's even one for students, how students can find resources. So you could play this for your kids, or email it to them, share it to share it with them. Um, there also um, is lots of professional development. I have an amazing team. I tell y'all what, it's like, I can't do it without tearing up. It's amazing to work for this company and the team that I have because they care about you and they care about authors and illustrators and they just want to make your job easier. And, um, and so they are there, they will help you. Um, and so they have professional development. And one of the things that they do, there's my team, Sandy and Mary Beth, I mean Mary Ellen, Mary Beth's at the State Library. And there's Kim and me um, in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, yeah. And so what they have, they have these webinars of the month. And so um, the next one is um, on December, um, I mean on 9-11. It's a 30-minute workshop on resources for diverse books. So it's just on that focus. It's 30 minutes. And I know, you know, you're teaching. You're working with kids during that time. So what do you do? You sign up for it and watch it later. You sign up for it and you watch it later in the comfort of your own home with the beverage of your choice. Yeah. Right? That's what you do. And then there, there's also a, a new thing they're doing called essential elements. And in these essential elements, they will, um, Sandy and Mary Ellen will coach you through some more of the basics. So you get a little bit more exposure to how do you do this, how do you do that, the, the intricacies of 
the different kind of things that we looked at today. And so you can click on that. Those are 60 minutes long, um, but it's the same thing. If you sign up and you miss it, they'll send you an archive and you can watch it whenever you want to. And usually they'll send you links and some other really cool stuff too. Uh, but it's a great team and I'm very proud and pleased to be part of that. Oscar? Yes, so we have uh, a webcast viewer who is asking uh, Nancy from Fallbrook. Oh. Are you using Clever? I will be <gasps> That's a good question. What's Who is it? Nancy from Fallbrook. Nancy from Fallbrook. Hi, Nancy from Fallbrook. Um, she, and she is asking about Clever. And so um, Nick and the IT team have worked to integrate um, teaching books and Clever. So what you do is, remember how earlier um, we were looking at the um, embed piece? So that is share and promote and the embed tools. And so embedding teaching books, so when I scroll down, you see Clever right here, Nancy from Fallbrook, and all of those who are thankful, Nancy asked that question. Um, so I click right there, and it tells me what I need. So you just email accounts at teachingbooks, and they will give you your, what's it called, a key and a wink? I don't know what it's called. It's ask me about a book. I can tell you about those things, <laughs> or I can tell you about an author. Or how, but uh, that's that's why we need the Berkeley office because those that's what they do. So that's that question. Oscar, any others? That's the only one I received. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So that's your help and support. Um, they are so good about contacting you. So if you have a question or you find something that you think, oh, somehow this link is probably not what you meant. Um, accidents happen and sometimes um, websites get hijacked and things like that. So you have a technical concern or you find a resource that we don't have. You know about something. Email those people. I, before I went to work for them, every time they didn't have somebody's name that I wanted to know how to say, I would say, please call these people. Because <laughs> I'm embarrassed. Because I, the names, you know, that's, our, that's important. You know, it makes me nuts when I introduce myself as Deborah Ford and they say, hi, Debbie, it's nice to meet you. And I just want to say, did I say that? I did not say that. I'm pretty sure I said Deborah. Um, only my mama is allowed to call me Debbie. Um, and, uh, and so I think how you say somebody's name is important. And so having these authors and illustrators on there I, is also, I think, important. Um, so you contact us if you have any questions or concerns or, or anything that we want to know. Oh, so let's talk about following us. Where are we going? Um, you want to be sure that you've signed up for the newsletter because in the newsletter, Nick, our founder and um, president and all things inspirational, Nick Glass, um, will feature some resources, some things that you might want to, because, you know, again, it's hard when you just jump in there. And many of you are first-time users. Um, where do you start? Start, do like I did. I start with the newsletter and I listen to the things that they, uh, that, that are relevant to me in the newsletter or in Nick's picks. Um, you select your grade levels so that it's appropriate if you have particular subject areas that are interested to you and you want to make sure you're getting the teaching books update. But you can also follow us on social media. So for example, Pinterest. Um, so that'd be moi. Yay. So if you have any ideas about the Pinterest boards, because I've just um, taken over that. And so one of the things that I do is as new resources are, are um, Posted, I put them in, um, in boards on Pinterest. So uh, the books that are this year's books. If you're looking for what's new this year, you can click on the newly released books. And then when you click here, these will go to those books. So a mall unbound is getting all kinds of stuff. Oh, I'm not logged in. Um, but if I was logged in, it would take me right to it. Um, Continue with that account. Um, so it'll do that. 
Um, I'm also, as the new um, Meet the Authors, uh, as those things are being recorded, um, I'm pinning those. So you can follow us on Pinterest. You can get ideas about your bulletin boards, fun library ideas, um, by particular topics, etc. So you can follow us that way. You can follow us on Facebook and then on Twitter. One of the things that we like to do is a Twitter chat. And in that, we often share resources, but we also share how we're using it. Um, and that's nationwide. So you'll find out how people are using it in New York and how people are using it in Florida and all those kind of things. And we, of course, we learn from each other. Um, and then there's the teachingbooks.net blog. And on the blog, you'll see articles that have come from the newsletter. You'll see lots of times there is a guest blogger that's an author or an illustrator, or you'll see contest where you can win cool things. And we all love to win. And we all love free. So check out the blog as well. So there are all kinds of ways that you can connect with teaching books. And we hope that you will. Um, but just remember, um, as we're wrapping up here, that uh, like I always say, um, books are that, uh, I heard Kate D. Camilla say this a couple of years ago. I was at a breakfast. And she said, books give kids language to talk about things that matter. And, and that's exactly right. And so teaching books will help you make those connections. They might um, help you um, help a child see that, hey, that, that person looks just like I look. They have the same color skin as me. They have the same accent as me. Um, there's a, store, there's a, a book that that's my life. My life is like that. And it makes that connection. And it makes what you do matter even more. And so I hope that as you um, enjoy this resource, that um, it will also bring you joy. It will save you time. Um, I'm thankful to um, the state to provide these things. And I hope that we will just knock them numbers through the roof. And you'll not only get these three state resources, you'll also um, get more. So use them. Don't lose them and save your children. Um, I want to thank Cindy and Jonathan and Oscar for having me. As always, it's a pleasure to be here in San Diego. It's one of the places I get to travel and I don't need a GPS. <laughs> <laughs> and the food and the company are amazing. So um, I'm thankful. I, I will do a short commercial because I will be back. December 4th. December 4th. Uh, especially for those of you who work with elementary um, or up to sixth grade because I'm going to be doing my annual hot books of the year. And guess what it'll be connected to this year? Da-da! <laughs> so yeah, so as you're listening, you'll be able to make great list about um, how you want to use these with the kids that you work with. So thanks so much for coming. I know it's the beginning of the school year. I hope you have an amazing year. And if anything, if I can do anything for you, here's how you reach me. And here's your homework. All right, so you're going to go to, that's your interactive tutorial. Watch the video. Explore Teaching Books offerings. And then if you need me, you email me at deb at teachingbooks.net. And that's my phone number, 608-347-0398. That's my, don't, if you have my old number, get rid of it. Um, but you can text me. You can call me. Um, I am going to be traveling from one end of California and back and forth to Ohio and the Mister um, till we get it. So holler if you need me. Whoop, you're so welcome. You're so welcome. Thanks, everybody at home. <laughs>